Hi, Harrison Solomon with Hooks Flint. Today with a quick video of really about indications for relative motion orthoses. Uh, as time has gone on uh, in our practice, we have been using the relative motion orthosis for an increasing number of diagnoses. At first, it was just extensor tendon repairs or sagittal band ruptures. But now we use it a lot for most problems with PIP motion issues, including PIP contracture during, uh, from trauma or uh, even the little residual PIP contracture after PIP sprain, um, also after fracture, of course. So many PIP uh, range of motion issues, flexion contractures, extension contractures, etc. And then, of course, you have your other tendon problems like boutonniere deformity. You've got your other soft tissue conditions such as Dupuytren's disease, and we're using it post-treatment uh, after either needling or enzyme uh, or the open fasciectomy to uh, improve range of motion at both the MCP and the PIP. To that end, we find a lot of versatility with the hook splint RMO um, as its ability to flip both ways. We find it increasingly common that we would like to try and move a digit in both directions. So at certain times, have them working on uh, the finger with relative extension, and other times working on the finger with relative flexion. Um, and so here's a uh, RMO hook splint I just uh, put together, and this is how we would normally use it to uh, keep the middle finger in relative extension. Um, but for example, I had a patient the other day with a locked trigger finger for months uh, who didn't come into treatment. So we released the trigger finger and then she's just coming up part way. So she has her MCP is tight in flexion, which would make us want to put the finger in relative extension to work on the MCP joint. Um, but also her PIP is tight. So we're having her use the hook splint in both directions half time each day, one hour on extension, one hour on flexion. When the finger is in relative flexion, we're working on that PIP extension, and then she can flip it around and go back. The other final issue I'll just say is on the physician side, sometimes people come in, they have that residual, say a little PIP flexion contracture from a sprain, they're not even sure if they want to treat it. They just want to make sure nothing's wrong. Um, uh, they are certainly not sure if they want to just commit to a whole hand therapy program and, and go forth with that type of, of treatment. Uh, and, but to just put them in a, a relative motion orthosis to try and get those few degrees, you can put it on in the office. They can get on with their daily activity and uh, wear the relative motion orthosis for um, a month or so, and that does a really good job getting the PIP back into full extension. Um, similarly, hand pain, the random pains in the hand, or we have people lifting weights, have metacarpal phalangeal joint pain, normal x-rays, uh, they can lift weights and stabilize a knuckle say again, it's the middle finger, we sort of stabilize that proximal phalanx, it stabilizes the ray, and we have a lot of anecdotal feedback of using this in the weight room or in the garden or for various activities, and it just reduces the pain associated with some PIP, some MCP inflammation, mild arthritis, or just some overuse strain in that area. So just a few extra thoughts for expanding indications for relative motion orthoses. We'll see you soon.